Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about the Little Rascal pellet stove. The Little Rascal pellet stove is a 40,000 BTU heater and has a 99% uh, combustion efficiency, uh, which basically is going to let you know that you're only going to have 1% ash left over. <clears throat> so that's going to be less cleaning, less maintenance for you. Even though the stove is in a smaller package, you're actually going to be able to heat quite a, a large uh, area. You can heat anywhere between 800 and 2,000 square feet. Uh, the stove can be installed in the living areas, basements, sunrooms, anywhere where you need supplemental heat, or if you can locate it in a central area in the house, you can actually heat a majority of the home. And keep in mind that the Little Rascal is only uh, pellet burning, and you want to make sure that you're using a premium grade pellet. Uh, different pellets on the markets are going to burn differently, and in order for your stove to uh, burn efficiently and to not have a, a lot of clean, uh, or extra cleaning on your stove uh, and uh, keeping the maintenance down on the stove, you want to make sure that you're burning a, a premium grade pellet. Some of the features of the uh, Little Rascal is thermostatically controlled. Uh, the thermostat uh, on the stove will uh, actually regulate the heat for you while you're away from the house or you can actually regulate that uh, on your own manually. The stove weighs about 275 pounds, so it's not extremely heavy, but when it comes to a pellet stove, uh, the stove is constructed nice and heavy for years of good use. The stove is also going to have options of black, gold, or nickel doors and legs. And you can mix and match those however you like. The hopper capacity on the stove is about 45 pounds so that you can get a long burn time without having to refuel. Okay, what I'm going to go over now are some of the location of the different parts on the Little Rascal. The first part that you're going to want to look at is your hopper. You have your hopper lid, and this is the hopper where you're going to actually store your fuel when you're actually burning your stove. And the hopper uh, raises up and down and is sealed at the top with a gasket. You always want to kind of check that once in a while, make sure your gasket's in intact. The other thing that you'll notice is your uh, hot air uh, discharge grill. Your hot air discharge grill behind that is your uh, heat exchange tubes, which you have a cleaner in the front to actually scrape those tubes off. Uh, as you're burning the stove over time, you're going to notice that you'll get a little ash buildup on your tubes. So you want to use your tube because that will get hot. So you want to use your tube or use your uh, tool to actually uh, pull your uh, scraper rod, and that's going to scrape the uh, heat exchange tubes off for you and keep those clean. That's something that you'll probably do every two to three days. The other thing that you'll notice, of course, is your front door, and on the front door, it's fully adjustable. And the front door is actually going to have a, a, a neo-ceramic glass in the front door. Uh, this glass will not break under heat pressure and uh, will last a lifetime. Inside the firebox, you're going to notice a couple of things. You're going to notice your uh, air wash. And what we're doing here is we're bringing hot air up over the inside of the glass to help keep the ash off of it so as you can see your fire. You'll have your fire pot, your ash pan, your drop tube, of course, this is your cleaner right here for your rod. To remove your ash pan, you'll pull the ash pan out. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually leave it in, vacuum that out periodically. Once you're doing a more of a deep cleaning, then you can pull the ash pan out and actually clean underneath it. Underneath the ash pan, you're going to have a couple of clean out ports so that you can get your uh, vacuum in there and get the heat exchanger area vacuumed out uh, frequently. Now, you're going to clean your ash pan out about every, it all depends on the quality of fuel you're using and, and how much you're actually burning your stove, but, uh, but your ash content that's left over, you're going to vacuum out of here anywhere between three and six days, say. Uh, just depends on uh, the frequency of uh, and how many pounds a day you're burning and, uh, <clears throat> and the quality of fuel. 